So we'll go ahead and get started. Let me um, start with the webinar itself. So this is, um, it, you know, in this series of webinars, we want to make sure that these are interactive and helpful in, you know, with, a, with uh, uh, understanding more about how EFI can help um, help the, the business. And really, with, with this uh, session, we're going to go through the Pro16H as, as the ultimate growth tool really focused around optimizing the workflow. So it's much, much more than a printer. And so today's um, webinar uh, objectives, right? So we want to walk through that. The, the, 16, the Pro 16H, the EFI Pro 16H, is a, you know, simple, uh, is, a, is a powerful printer that with its workflow can allow you to be, uh, to process from pre-press to print efficiently, effectively, and powerfully. So it's much more than just the print. And we want to we want to walk through that today. We're going to talk through the basic operations of the printer, but really get into the how quickly you can set up workflows for whether it's a new operator or or, or a new application, or use some of those advanced features to get to really get the power out of the, uh, the workflow in the in the printer itself. So many of you have seen the printer before. If you haven't, we'll walk through uh, a little bit of the overview. Uh, if you have, one of the, the most powerful parts of, it, of the printer is the, the embedded Fiery XF, the ability to do the workflow with the printer itself and to make things simple. And many of us are going through, you know, many of our customers, many, many of you are going through, you know, a, a unique time right now where we're looking at a business knowing that as, as things uh, progress, we're going to have to make sure that whatever we have is uh, simple to use for uh, for maybe if there's new folks that get involved um, or can can really automate as much as possible so that it can be the most powerful machine that we have out there P powerful process that we get out there so Danny I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to you let me flip to the next slide and uh, get started on the, the content if you do have questions everybody's on mute please ask them on the chat window we'll get to those questions as, as we go through um, and and uh, Danny take it away Okay, thank you very much, Dan. Um, really, we're, we're trying to figure out a way to um, give, you guys, give you guys the tool to assess kind of if you already own a Pro 30, uh, a Pro 16H, um, what, what you have in your hands. And uh, some of you are hands on, some of you might uh, be owners that, you know, you have operators who kind of the drive the printer, and we, we just wanted to um, uh, re give you the tools to reevaluate the, the equipment that you have and uh, a lot of its capabilities. And uh, typically, we talk about kind of the functionality of the printer and the output of the printer, but uh, as Dan was mentioning, one of the key elements of it is the, uh, it's the DFE engine and uh, what it enables you to do. And a lot of times also, uh, it kind of, people talk about automation and, and, and workflow and, and all kinds of terms that it's sometimes it's kind of hard to pinpoint. So really our objective today is to kind of give you this overview of when we talk about workflow related to the Pro 16H, what really it means and how can you really uh, set it up in such a way that it's optimized for your business. So with that said, a quick uh, overview about the uh, Pro 16H, the printer uh, itself. Um, for whoever is not familiar with it, it's a, it's really a very versatile kind of Swiss Army knife Pro 16H. Uh, with it's a 1.6 meter hybrid printer. Uh, basically, you can print both rigid as well as flexible media on it. Uh, it comes with uh, Ricoh Gen 5 uh, print heads or six print heads. CMYK and two whites uh, can give you a very nice resolution and image quality, uh, as well as very efficient with LED UV curing, and uh, quite a quite a good productivity levels for this uh, entry level production printer. Uh, our focus today is to look under the hood at the digital front end, which is DFE stands for DFE, and uh, what we want to discuss is kind of the power of the workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, each EFI wide format printing system purchased includes a computer running Fire XF, and it's an integral part of the workflow. Next slide, please. Yeah, and Danny, before I go to the next slide, let me just add to that, because again, as we talk about the 16H as the ultimate growth tool, 
Many of you know that the versatility is what you just talked about, the hybrid, the ability to do hybrid, roll to roll, use white or not. That's that's obvious as a growth. That, that gives you the power to to do lots of things. You know, you mentioned the Swiss Army knife. Uh, that versatility as you as you have new jobs or bring in new jobs. This next step as we're going into is say, how do we make that easier for you, more more automated, and and do that in a in a much easier fat, much easier repeatable, uh, expandable fashion. So that's that's what we'll walk through here, and it's I'm pretty excited about that part. So let me go through the next slide. Okay, so a bit of an overview related to workflow. So at a macro level, when discussing workflows, these are the complete steps needed to be taken from the customer requirements to print delivery, and the segments include the marketing and customer acquisition. That's the interface between the service provider and the customer. For example, getting the job the images and the schedule requirements. You have the business management segment, that this is the steps required to bridge between the business and the production requirements. You have pre-production, it's all the tasks associated with managing and controlling a successful production run. And then production, the process of printing, preparing, and final printed product. So industry has invested significantly in automating the workflow, improving efficiencies, reducing operator errors, and overall headcount to manage the process. The trend is to see more customized workflow tools to, each, to meet each business need. If I work, so next click. If I offer a complete set of platforms from web to print, though our focus for this webinar is the pre-press workflow through post print. So as you can see, the firing workflow and the, and the tools on the printer. Next slide, please. So as you can see from this uh, chart, um, this block diagram focuses on, in more details on the workflow steps from file creation to post print. The key elements include the file creation, pre-press configuration using the Fiery XFDFE, and the printer and cutter systems. In general, if you look at the flow, a file is created and then uploaded to the Fiery XF pre-press. The pre-press includes tools to edit, enhance, and prepare the file for print. When the file is ready for print, it is ripped and downloaded to the printer utility for printing. FireXF will also, uh, also can send a separate file directly to the cutter with cut marks automating the overall workflow. So we'll kind of dive a little deeper into each one of these buckets. Next slide, please. So in regards to image creation, a successful print job is highly dependent on the quality of the image file being printed. A high quality image file has a high probability of a successful print, whereas a low quality image file is very difficult to output as a great quality print. Therefore, the importance in putting the effort in building the file correctly. A few some common graphic layout software packages that you're probably familiar with, uh, the Adobe Creative Suite with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign and Acrobat, and then there's also the Corral Draw. File output conventions from these suites, probably the most uh, user friendly is the PDF and EPS, but there's also the TIFF, JPEG, and PSD versions of files. A few critical uh, features that need to be taken into account when uh, building these files, building these images. Uh, you have to consider, are you going to have white or clear ink capabilities, spot color handling, consider the end application material, you know, what the colors, the textures, the sheen, and also the cut path creation. So all that has to be taken account into the image creation. There's a couple of links on this slide, the YouTube video link as well as white ink preparation and print. Um, 
these links will actually um, enable you to get to tips on how to create great quality images files. Okay, so within this uh, webinar, we're, we're really kind of scratching the surface, but we do want to, uh, we are going to give you quite a lot of tools and access to tools that you can really go much deeper into, into really understanding and how to actually implement um, the workflow. Next click, please. So this is the pre-press configuration using Fiery XF, as we mentioned, the DFE. So what does this mean? Fiery XF is a scalable digital front end that improves printing, production, and color capabilities. Fiery XF version 7 has two key features to it. The Fiery XF server, which is kind of responsible for the RIP engine, or fast RIP engine. And then you have the Fiery Command Workstation. The, works, the, the Command Workstation is kind of the key environment that the operator or whoever is setting up the workflow is going to be spending the time in. The, the Command Workstation has two elements. It has the Job Center, which is basically a server that manages your job activity. So, for example, to connect your network devices, it's going to be through the Command Workstation. Uh, downloading the files, managing the job queue, it's part of the job center. The other key element of the command workstation is the job editor, which is a tool to modify jobs. So you've probably seen um, the ability to create multiple tilings, nesting, uh, step and repeat, um, you know, when you have more than one job to print. Uh, scaling image rotation when you make adjustments to the print, as well as color management with color profile option, spot color management, and cut paths and cutters. Um, Fire overall is a very powerful engine that can be used at different levels depending on the really the business needs. Next uh, click. The last two components, the print and the post print, are kind of where the printer or the cutter or the router are, are have, depending on what you have in your facility. Uh, each typically has their own utility or GUI interface. Um, and the data from the, from the workflow arrives from the Fiery XF. So for example, uh, Fiery will, will rip the file and uh, download it to the printer or there's a separate file that would go in parallel directly to the cutter or router with the mark, uh, cut mark information. So, you know, when people talk about automation and workflow and how to simplify, reduce overall user error, I mean, these are the kind of things that really make it happen. Uh, next, next click. So, we, uh, until now, I kind of gave you a, a very simple overview of kind of the, the workflow from prepress to print. And now let's talk a little bit about building the workflows. There's three different types of workflows that can be set up with a Pro 16 HDFE. The predefined automated workflow, where you basically just import, you rip the file, and you print it. Um, this is really great when there is repeatable print jobs. Same Im the, the, it does require the same image and substrate. The, uh, the next workflow is a predefined semi-automated workflow, where again, you have to import. You have the ability to make adjustments to the file, then rip and print. Uh, this is great when there are repeatable prints, uh, print jobs that may require some level of editing but still requires the same image and substrate, but there could be a change to the quantity or a color enhancement or something like that that we'll be able to show you a bit later. And then the third workflow, which is the manual workflow, which is typically for unique jobs. So when a new job, you know, the first time that you need to print something, you would create it through a manual workflow. You can create multiple workflows of each version and mix and match. It all depends on what works best 
for your print shop. Now, how do you figure that out? How do you know what your business really needs from a workflow? How do you optimize that? Mm -hmm. So there's a few questions that, you know, if you answer them, would be able to help you and guide you in this direction. Um, so for example, how many different variety of material changeover runs per shift? Um, are the jobs pre-planned or it really depends what comes through the door? You know, can you forecast the activity or it really varies greatly from customer to customer walking through the door? Are there any special customer color, color demands? You know, uh, you know, it's kind of known the Coca-Cola red or Pepsi blue. I know. Are, are, you, are you printing specific requirements with uh, company branding? that is critical to hit a, a specific color. Uh, obviously, do, do you have post-cutting capability? Do you have a router? Do you have a cutter in your facility? Uh, do you have the right drivers for it to interface to fiery? Uh, is your printer operator knowledgeable in DFE? You know, you can, uh, depending on the level of experience that they have, you can set it up in an automated way where the only thing they need to do is import, rip, and print, and it's a very simple simple level of task, so the level of experience that the operator has might not need, doesn't need to be high. Whereas, you know, there's some gorgeous work that can be done uh, with this very powerful Fire XF engine, uh, and uh, you can go very deep into um, the, the the level of knowledge and experience needed to be able to to create those. Uh, Great print. And, so, and Danny, I think, you, I think you just hit on something right there, right? So the, the idea of how can we automate something so that um, the operator that's running it need doesn't need to know all of that and it's repeatable, right? So the the the, the you know the, the idea of making something repeatable and that really is that moving to production that we talked about earlier. So it's not just the print, but how do I set it up so that I'm sure that any operator, you know, again, they don't have to be as the guy that set up the, the workflow. When they run it, it's as simple to them as hitting print, but really it's leveraging the power of all this this workflow that's set up and behind the scenes so that that, that finished product um, is exactly what's needed for the customer. Is that right. that's what you're saying from the, the automated workflow component? It, it, exactly, exactly. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're coming through a, a tough time with, uh, um, from a business standpoint, and you know, some businesses had to kind of put people on furlough or let people go and stuff. And you know, so so how do you kind of leverage that talent back? How do you assess the people when you rehire? What can they do? Uh, what are, what's the what's the knowledge that's needed? Right. Um, the other element of it is uh, a lot of times you can kind of bring in the expertise ahead of time and build up the, the structure of, 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 of work that you are forecasting to have and all the more complex stuff is already in play and then there's ways to, there's different ways to manage kind of the the way that you want to set up the workflow. So, uh, so what, what you're saying is like just like the printer itself you know it's a hybrid it can handle a variety of work roll to roll with white without white you know there's a lot of options it can have even in the workflow there's a lot of options i can be very manual i got a custom job first time i'm ever doing it to build it but i can save that off or save that there so it's completely automated or somewhere in between to really that flexibility and versatility of the printer doesn't just end at the the, the print mode it, it's in in the uh, workflow itself uh, absolutely and yeah. again, don't forget, this is a uh, entry-level production printer, so yeah. it really can, uh, you know, especially if you need uh, to do larger jobs and larger quantity and throughput, um, you know, at those in those scenarios, typically the workflow is somewhat the same, mm -hmm. and you know, time is money. So if you can kind of automate it in such a way that you only have to uh, import you import it once, you and then you rip once, and you just print, right? So um, there's a lot of efficiencies that you can do. Or on the other extreme, nobody wants to not be able to take on a job, right? So mm -hmm. having the ability and knowledge to run a manual workflow is kind of important. 
Yeah, that, uh, see, that ability to be that flexible. So I, 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 I'm efficient as possible on the, the, the ones that I know about. So I just pick one of those and I can spend the time on the difficult ones that are manual or one off that probably are high value and high margin as well. So uh, taking cost out of the ones that I should be able to just hit print and have everybody do and have the, the time spent on the ones that were, where we should new, unique or or different. Right. Exactly. And, and look at the if you look at the bottom here, you know, the statement of reduce human error, don't touch what you can automate, right? I mean, that th there's some additional benefits uh, of kind of automating your process, right? So if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, what I wanted to share with you is uh, in the next couple of slides um, are kind of the tools to be able to really get in more details of uh, the workflow and, and specific fiery XF. Um, these are basically links to uh, 11 courses that are available online. These are videos that are um, very, uh, very clear uh, that um, John Nates, uh, one of our fiery trainers has created that really kind of talks about each element, each one of the elements of fiery um, that you can see here. So kind of the fundamentals that uh, we'll have today, Tiffany kind of show and walk us through. Uh, but really, so giving the ability to actually learn it in your own time, your own schedule, your own pace, right? So you have this tool. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, what we also wanted to do, so those files are available to anybody, uh, but we're also, to the people that are participating in this, uh, webinar, we wanted to supply a complimentary uh, XF professional certification training, which is basically using the same files, the same uh, the, the same tool set, the same videos and everything, but um, that you can get a certificate that you actually went through these um, through these uh, courses. Uh, and that basically, you know, if if we do have uh, a few uh, operators that you want them to kind of strengthen their know-how in um, Fire XF, you know, they, they can actually go through this and kind of show you the certificate at the end. And really that's kind of a powerful tool to be able to kind of enhance your workforce, you know, when yeah. things might be a little bit slow. So we'll make the, we'll make these links in this presentation available to everybody uh, that's on there. So the, the presentation, the links that you showed are on there. We're going to switch over, I think, now to um, uh, to the live to see it live right so what we talked about is the power of the machine really that the idea of how do i really leverage that workflow uh, component of the, the machine the tools that we're going to we're sharing with you are so uh, available to to you those ones that the first links are are out there public but for you guys that are on here we'll make you available for this um this fire access professional certification and really that's you know, for the operators or the people that that you, that you want, it it makes sense and it's a it's a great investment of their time. Is that D Danny? Anything else, or should I, Tiffany? Am I switch? I'm switching over to you. I think at this point. Uh, yeah, unless Danny has anything else to add. I'm, uh, no, I'm sure uh, we'll be able to answer Q and A kind of as they come. So, uh, Tiffany, if you can kind of help us to uh, get a better grasp of uh, the overview. <laughs> Sure thing. We just have to switch over. Yeah. So for for those of you guys that haven't met Tiffany, she's uh, in our Londonderry demo center, and we're actually doing um, uh, this is a live demo of, of the machine and the software itself that you'll see. Uh, Tiffany, I can see your screen, so you're you're good. If you're uh, working working in there, I yeah. And, and so this is. Again, if it wasn't clear for everybody that the FireXF software, this is the software that comes with the machines built in, it's separate. And really that's the part of the power of EFI, right? How do we really leverage the RIP, not just as an add-on, but an integral component to the device itself. And for this this class of machine, that's exactly what we um, we saw as important and heard from our customers. How can they have a tool that's simple to start, but uh, doesn't have gate allows them to grow as their business grows, and that's really both the printer and the workflow uh, component of the, the with FireXF fit fit those uh, exactly. I can do things very simply, 
or I can do some very complex, complicated, repeatable items. And that's what, uh, Tiffany, I see you're ready. I'll, I'll let you go through uh, from Thank here. you. Thank you, everybody. Um, welcome and, and good afternoon. Thanks for taking some time today to go over this uh, workflow scenario with us. Um, so you should have um, the team viewer view of uh, the Fire EXF um, to Dan's point. Um, it is embedded, it is on board, and it's included. So all of the color management tools, all of the profile tools to make your own custom material profiles, um, white ink, all of that stuff is included. And it's the, the major takeaway there is that um, we want to make sure that we're giving you a complete solution right out of the gate um, with the integration, um, you know, software included, white on board, um, all of that stuff so that you can, you can really hit the ground running. And again, um, as a high, you know, medium production volume house or, um, you know, at this moment where everybody needs to say yes to everything coming in, regardless if it's the onesie twosie work, um, and then, you know, being able to support that burst capacity um, once everything goes back to the new normal. So. Um, what you're going to see me do is, um, you know, talk about um, a couple of each of the scenarios that Danny and Dan covered as far as it can be as simple as you want it, it can be as custom as you want it, it can be as automated as you want it. You have the ability to do all of that um, right through Fiery Access. So um, on import, uh, over here you have um, all of your different servers. So on this one pro server, you can drive multiple different printers. So if you had multiple installs of a 16H, if you had um, you know, some other equipment that can be driven by Fire EXF, you can build up those workflows on the left-hand side. Now on import, we can go out and select whatever image that we're gonna use. So you can see I have selected just one image. I'm gonna hit okay. And then over here, I have server workflow options. So at this point, I can say, I know this job that's coming in is gonna be printing on a four by four sheet of chloroplast. I hit hold. And what you'll see is as that image comes in, it will automatically be managed behind the scenes. So as one operator, um, you know, I don't have to do any clicking. Um, this was already predefined. Say maybe you're the shop owner right now and you're gonna be setting up all of these workflows so that your operators, um, you know, they're coming in at a more entry level. They don't have to have a lot of background in Fiery XF. You want them to come in, import the jobs that you've given them, have Fiery XF do all of the management. You just want them loading the material and engaging the print. So you can see I only had one click where I selected I wanted the four by four material. And you'll see automatically, I had no other intervention on your screen. You can see um, I stepped this out to fit the four by four sheets. So Fiery on import knew the size of my image. Um, it stepped it out to fill the entire four by four sheet. My workspace is only the four by four sheet. You can see that it automatically applied the cut information that I'm gonna be taking this sheet off um, after print, sending it over to my Zund. So it applied the cut marks. It applied the barcode that my Zund is gonna be looking for. And it applied the job footing for the, for the uh, job that's being processed. So um, again, all I did was pick my job and I chose my sheet size. And now as an operator, all you have to do is load your substrate and engage the print. So um, in, in this instance, it's very automated um, to include layout, scaling, um, margins, cut information. Um, all of that data is managed again with just one click. That, that's excellent. So that's really, you're, you're doing, I think I counted four steps. You load the job, you pick the, um, the setting, load the material and print, right? Really, that's it. And you've got a very complex job. So really anybody that can do it, it's repeatable, it's accurate, it's it's something that uh, that um, ensures that the finished product is exactly what's needed. Exactly. It's regardless of operator, it's regardless of shift, it's regardless of um, you know image size. It, it doesn't all have to be predefined. What we're telling the printer is, or what we're telling the software, here's my image. It can be a two by two, it can be you know, something significantly smaller, something larger, and it's going to automatically lay it out in a way that fills that substrate, applies the cut mark, and sends that cut data across while it sends the print file. One thing to note also is if you have, you know, you, you've got a job, you did it, and a year later somebody wants to come back and get exactly the same job. Yep. Is that a just justification? Yep, repeatability. So, um, the, the 
printer, uh, sorry, Fire XF will output a BCO file that you can save to a customer log. Um, you can just re-import that BCO file and completely remove the Fire XF portion. Or because it's a predefined workflow, as long as you haven't made any changes to that workflow, as soon as you import that new job or that repeat job, it, all of these settings will be here automatically. Now, to take this one step further, um, you can set it up in such a way that um, as soon as the nesting is complete, it will automatically process the BCO, so you don't even have to engage print over here. Um, it will send the BCO automatically right over to the printer, and then as an operator, they don't even open FireEXF. FireEXF is managed either by you know, the graphics department or by the, the production manager, um, and as the operator, they are just going out and getting that RIP file already, so you can take it one step further and actually have it produce that BCO without having to engage print. Now, um, another really great thing is that um, we have the ability to have not only multiple workflows, um, so all of these predefined actions happen, but we also have uh, the ability to develop media databases. So you saw that on import, I have the ability to select a workflow. And when I selected that workflow over here, you can see my media database automatically adjusted because I have it predefined in the workflow that my media is going to be 48 by 48. Now, if I want all of those same settings, I want it to automatically step and repeat to fill the sheet. I want it to automatically apply cut marks, but this time I'm printing on a larger sheet. Maybe I'm printing on a 48 by 96. You can select that 48 by 96 and all of those actions from the workflow will then be applied to the material. So now, if you're saying, okay, this workflow is great, but I have 10 common materials, do I need to have 10 different workflows? Absolutely not. You can apply all of those same actions to a, a, a media. So all you have to do when you're setting up a new media is put in the size and put in the mode. So now you've got 10 different medias that you can attach to the one workflow. So it's very, 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 um, you know, sort of nimble, easy to, easy to maneuver. And again, the major benefit to the 16H is the efficiency of media material changeover. So you want to make sure that the front end is also efficient so that you can say yes and have a lot of material changeovers without doing a lot of front end work. And really take advantage of that, right? So you're actually leveraging, again, the print on the media, everything's right. So you're, again, with a couple of uh, quick clicks in your it. Um, so now there's two directions that you can go when you're setting up these workflows. Um, and both of those directions work um, regardless of the uh, complexity of the workflow. So again, we talked about um, a couple of different ways uh, or different workflow options, right? Completely custom where every job that comes in, you're going to manually adjust the size, you're going to manually adjust your layering, you're going to manually do the scaling and all that. Um, the in-between is the one that I just showed you where you have several click points um, managed, but once you, if you need to, you can go in and you can make uh, manual adjustments. The next one that I'm going to show you um, is considerably more complex, and it allows you to have that really custom uh, custom setup workflow specific. Maybe it's a, it's a challenging material. Maybe you're printing on uh, a fabric. Maybe you're printing on carpet. Maybe you're printing on wood. Um, and it's going to require a little bit more uh, manual intervention ahead of time. But again, you want to utilize that uh, automated flow afterwards. So what you can do is you can, from the server level, you can go to the server manager. You're going to open up server manager, and then you can create new media databases as well as new workflows. So you can see you've got the workflows down here, and then you've got your media over here. So if you wanted to create a new material, go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. So I'll name this one um, 4896 Coroplast. Hit save. And now from here, you can set up your output modes. Now, Coroplast, we know, is sort of a down and dirty price competitive um, application. So what I would select here is I would choose our two-pass distant outdoor view mode at 569 square feet per hour. It's going to be a good print quality. It's going to be have a great outdoor durability, but you're not going to spend all day printing it. And then down here, you're going to say that you're running a rigid material. Now, all, everything that I'm doing here works exactly the same for roll. So at this level, you're going to choose roll material or rigid material. And then you're going to put in your measurements. So, okay. And then from there, you have again the ability to apply. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing 
large sheets of dye bond and you know you're going to be doing white under at this level, you can select spot color white ink or apply your white ink management at this level, spread and choke at this level, and then select color on white. Again, if we're printing on a, a, a dye bond, we're going to be printing our white first and then our color on top. So we can go ahead and save that. And then once you have that saved, it will populate over here. With that, you can then come into the workflow automation side. You can create a new workflow and choose a custom layout. And then from there, you can see we can apply, we will do, um, Silver dye bond, and then you have complete control of all of those clicks that I just talked about. Now um, I'm going to go through these uh, kind of quickly, but again, this is you know this is all being recorded, so you guys can take a peek at um, the other settings that are available. But on the layout side, you have the ability to automatically scale to a specific size, so you can say scale whatever image, regardless of what it comes in, to fit the media size fit to the width, fit to the height. Again, it will do it disproportionately to fit to that specific size. Or you can say everything I bring in, reduce it by 10%, increase it by 20%, or you can scale the job numerically. If you choose numerically, I'm gonna go ahead and just make everything 22. Uh, the images, anything brought in, regardless of material size, will be scaled to 22 inches. You have automatic alignment based on your image size to your specified material size. You then have the ability to rotate automatically. So again, what this means is that every single job that gets imported to this workflow will automatically be scaled to 22 and will automatically be rotated if you so choose. You can apply margins. Again, the positioning of your image based on your material size. And then at this level, you have um, the step and repeat option or the nesting option. You can't do both at the same time. So what you can do is if you're selecting nesting, Fiery XF will allow you to import um, any amount of images that will stay in a hold queue until you have either enough images to fill 80% of your sheet or a predetermined amount of your sheet. And then it will automatically uh, give you the option to automatically nest regardless of how many images, regardless of how much uh, image area is taken up, um, sorry, how much material surface is taken up by your images. Um, and then automatically release after a predetermined amount of uh, time. So what that allows, again, your operator doesn't have to spend a lot of time thinking about um, how do I lay these out? You know, I've got all of these 10 jobs. Can they fit on one sheet of uh, four by eight, one sheet of four by four? Fiery XF will just allow you to keep feeding the rip and then it will output a BCO with all of these predetermined um, actions already done as soon as it fits a certain amount of, uh, you know, operator level assigned um, square footage. So um, at the nesting line, um, you then can come in and put in all of your margins between your jobs. You can have it um, automatically rotate and adjust the images so that you're cutting on a horizontal or a vertical line. And then you can also have uniform scaling based on, again, your images outside of your, your um, nested setting. Now, if you're choosing step and repeat, which is what we did in the previous example, you have a couple of options. So you can say step and repeat to give me my five copies, my six copies, whatever the case may be, or you can say fill the material. So at this point, when this workflow is pointing to the 48 by 96 or pointing to the 48 by 48, it'll automatically step and repeat as much as it can to fill whichever material you've established. You can also set up patterns and um, number of copies across, so you can do it manually as well. Say I want three across by two deep and then apply your margins here as well. You can flip and rotate here. And then also you can, um, or uh, in addition to, you can choose um, your tiling options as well. So if you're gonna be doing a large uh, banner run, you can have it set up so that it automatically tiles to a specific tile size um, if the media length uh, meets a certain requirement. Next, you have the cutting option. So um, under your marks, you can say, yes, I want marks. I'm going to be always, you know, the cutter that I have on the floor is the Zund or the Colex or the Esco, whatever the case may be. We have hundreds of drivers. Um, you can see if I choose the manufacturer here, you can see we have a, a pretty exuberant list of uh, third-party uh, post-print cutting options. 
for me, I can import a preset for my Zund that's going to automatically select my model, automatically put in all of the information that I need for my cutter, again, specific to, to my setup here. Um, again, you can have control over all of these settings based on whatever your, your third-party printer is. Um, contour cutting, you can assign, um, go so far as to assign which tool and which cut methodology um, you're going to be using. So this could be a 48 by 96 core plus workflow where you know every time you're going to be using a bounding box cut, every time you're going to need a certain number of, um, uh, of circle marks to read, and you're going to need a certain tool every time. So you can go so far as to assign all of that to the cutter as well. And then you also, of course, have your standard marks where you can do your crop marks, your grommet marks, your, your, um, all of the, the standard cuts as well. Um, Danny talked about uh, custom uh, color libraries. So if you have um, multiple different spot color libraries, you can select which one you want assigned to this workflow, again, specific to the workflow at this level. And then over here, you can select your media. So if you want by default, this to be the 4896 or the 48 by 48, you would select it here. And then you hit save. And then once you have that saved on import, you now will see we have an option for the 4896. And then we have our material set up here. So you would just select whichever one you needed and then bring it in and print. Now, as those workflows build up, um, what we find is that a lot of customers will, in turn, have a workflow specific for white and then a workflow specific for just TMYK. And then you'll have the appropriate modes, and the appropriate um, whiting candling, whether it's bounding box or flood or three layer. Um, another thing uh, that I, I forgot to mention is that you also have the ability to mirror. So if you're going to be printing second surface, you can have a, um, say, a PETG or a digital acrylic workflow that everything that gets brought into that workflow automatically gets mirrored to be second surface, automatically gets that white layer, automatically gets set up to three layer. Um, so again, repeatability and removing a lot of those click points. Uh, are there any questions online? I know that's a lot of information. <laughs> no, I don't see anything in the chat yet, but please enter anything in the chat window or the Q&A window. There's, uh, uh, there's some anything that uh, we want to have. Um, somebody kept said uh, they keep hearing the term BCO. What does that mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, that's just the file format that Kyria XF uh, feeds to the printer. It's the type of mm -hmm. file um, that uh, the printer is looking for. So you'll Kyria XF will process the image, um, process the workflow, and then the file that it then produces for the printer is the BCO. Good. Other other questions? I mean, I think Tiffany, what you showed, you know, again, the idea of production, right? How do we move to production? So it's more than just the print. The first time we do something, if it's saved, right, you save a, that workflow, the next person in has to do a lot less. And really that idea of shifting, you know, I have a workflow and then a media selection allows me to really be efficient in my use of media too. Maybe I have a, you know, I have to print some and I've got one size for the first part of the job and a different size for the second, second part of the job. I can do that without sacrificing any of the other um, uh, components are set up with the, the workflow so I can be very efficient in my media usage. And that's um, a really great word to bring up too, Dan, because yeah. at this point in digital inkjet technology, we all print pretty pictures, right? All of us. Yeah. Not, that's not specific to EFI. Um, differentiators in the market space is how efficiently can you do that? How quickly mm -hmm. can you do that? And that total cost of ownership, that return on investment. Those are two really big pieces of this because we have the hardware, the software, the ink driven best by one person, right? So um, you know, down to the pigments, we're making our own inks. We do all of the software development, but we also design, manufacture, and engineer the hardware. So it really is a complete solution. Um, so the competitive edge comes from these efficiencies, come from how well we can drive the software, how easily can you transfer between materials. That's the, really the differentiator. Um, when I started talking about the workflows, I mentioned that there are two different directions, right? So you can start at the server level and build it completely from scratch. Um, it's a little bit, uh, you know, clicky at first when you get started. Um, it does require a lot of forward thinking, you know, what's going to be the next thing down the line. Um, you can always go back and edit these. So if you find that, you know, I, I have this workflow that takes care of 95% of the clicks, but you still have a little bit that you want to try and automate, you can go back in and edit those workflows. The other direction that you can go is you can just start with an imported job and 
this is a two by two. Um, I know the uh, you know as the operator, I booked this job. I know that I'm going to need to scale it to 22 inches. I know it's going to be printed on die bond because it's got this really great shape wipe. So I'm going to go ahead to the output. And again, this isn't at the server level. This is specific just to this one job. This, we're not going to um, we're not going to save anything here. And then you can go into your uh, special printer settings. I know it's got a spot color white ink because I made it. I'm going to print my color on my white because I have that shape white, but I want that cool material to show through on the bottom. And I know that I'm going to be cutting it, so I'm going to apply these marks. And then I'm like, you know what? This is something I do a lot. I find myself going through these quick motions a lot for this specific job, for this customer, for this material. After it's already built, you can go ahead and save as a workflow. Once you have it saved as a workflow, we can say, you know what? This is die bond. Anything brought into this workflow is always going to have white under because it's die bond, and it's going to be on a 24 by 24 inch piece of material. I hit save. And now I have another job that comes in. I know that it's going to be on die bond. I can go ahead and now select my die bond with white under. And because I didn't assign a material size at that point, I can come in and choose from my material database. So if I know that my die bond is 24 by 24, if I know that it's 48, 48, you hit hold and it will automatically apply that size change to white under and, and the output modes as well. So you can go you know, from the server level, or you can go on a job-to-job -job basis. As, as your operator is getting experience, you can build the, the workflows forward. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a question come in. Any tips on two-sided printing? Uh, anything for that rigid or roll? Or in roll? Uh, so rigid double-sided printing over here, you have a couple of different options. Um, if you know your material is cut square or, or is pretty consistently cut square, you can use your same zero, zero point. So in the back, You'll lower your fence, you'll load your substrate, print side one, take that same sheet off, flip it over, print side two. Uh, with really, actually, really relatively um, consistent uh, image placement. Again, if your material is cut skewed, um, then, then you run into a little bit of an issue. But if you know your material is cut square, um, you can just take it off. That fence registration, that zero, zero point is solid and it's repeatable. Um, so ultimate confidence there. If you do know that your material is potentially or is occasionally um, cut unsquare, what you can do is print side one over here on this zero, zero point, flip it over, and print side two on the opposite side using a zero point on the other side of the fence. And then you just have to build in your margin for uh, your positioning of the image on the, um, and on the, uh, the cross process direction. Um, okay. So you have, two, you have a couple of different options. Good. And um, and as you you know as you were saying as you're walking through and again it just keeps hitting me that um, we set up the workflow once and you know again as we get into production and Danny I think you mentioned that you know maybe people are working second shifts or how do I make that 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 the the first person that sets up the workflow may have to know have all the knowledge on what you know how to set it up but the second the next people just have to run the machine so they yep. really don't need that knowledge to set it up maybe they maybe they have enough knowledge to edit something right so that's okay. Uh, but really that flexibility of, um, of that what level of operator is, is required it really is it's pretty broad um, you know you can you don't need somebody that's completely technical that it has to go build out these if you have a, a production manager that understands the equipment and knows what the job flow looks like they can set that up ahead of time and mm -hmm. not to downplay it i mean hire anybody off the street that can, you can teach them how to you know load a, load a piece of material in the print. good uh, was there some other some, some yeah, just a comment, uh, Tiffany? You kind of mentioned uh, different EPAS differentiations, and I think one of the things is kind of the in-depth level of expertise. And uh, one of the things that uh, EPAS also offers, you know, as we have the fire uh, team as part of a ES5 solution, and uh, they can supply uh, application services that can help you set up your know, workflows and kind of uh, train your personnel to do that so uh we kind of offered you uh, the ability to actually do it yourself uh you could get certified in doing yourself but you know if you really want to kind of take it to the next level uh you always have the option to reach out to uh, efi and uh these uh, uh experts in fire uh, you know are really great in what they do and the, the links that you guys are going to be provided for joining the webinar 
um, the 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 online tutorials, they're just a couple of minutes at a time. They go through step by step by step everything that you saw today. So in a matter of 20 minutes, you'll have all of the knowledge base that you just saw today. Um, very quick and easy. I mean, they're an absolute awesome tool. And there's little tests at the end of each tutorial to make sure that you're picking up on the on the on the good bits. Um, but it's something you guys, you know, having attended the webinar, should absolutely take advantage of. Yeah, that was one of the questions that came in. Um... I think uh, from Kobe, Kobe's on. Thank you, Kobe. Was any live classes? You know, we to even the end users. We've got operator training classes that are available, recorded, uh, as well as some things that can be done for end customers. And a ton. Of, there's a lot of fiery and this this workflow training. There's a lot of it that's available uh, for for cust for end customers um, as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and like I said, it, they should they should absolutely be utilized because. Yeah. You know, it's it's free for now uh, for for the folks on the line, and um, then we also have uh, available, you know, white papers and additional application specific training um, that's also available as needed. Um, and and my team, right? So we're we're here, and we are, um, you know, front end and hardware and applications uh, experts, you know, based on our products. Um, I have a fantastic team here. So if you guys. Um, you know, have any questions on file setup, or if you want us to uh, run some samples for you to prove um, that the software and the printer and the ink can perform in a way that helps grow your business, that's absolutely what my time, my team is here for. And we are here most every day and open for business. So, another question: And can the equipment print on textile stock? Was what uh, came in as the question. So, yeah, great so, question. Yeah. So, um, I have a sample here that is just phenomenal. This was printed on a digitally receptive textile. So this is um, a Samba product. It's also a really great product um, from Ultraflex. And it is a textile. So it's it's what you would see in your light boxes at airports and malls when we're all allowed to go back outside again. Um, you can see it's, it's very fibrous. Um, you know, it is, it's a very soft, flexible material, um, but it holds a phenomenal dot. So this was printed on the 16H. Um, and it, you can run it really fast in, in a very high speed mode because uh, the, the textile holds a very great drop, but it also maneuvers well through the printer. Um, and again, the ink performance, again, you know, having that perfect pairing of the right ink for the right application, right printer, and, and EFI owning all of that, we can have an ink set that is this flexible that's able to be run on the hybrid platform. So. Yeah, but again, that back to that versatility, and when we talk about the, the Pro 16H is the ultimate growth tool, it's that's what we see. I think many of our customers that we have, they start with one or two types of work, but quickly expand into lots of other areas. And this idea of the workflows, again, they may have simpler workflows to start, but again, as the business builds, there's a lot of repeat work. There's a lot of high, high value, high margin, different work that they spend time on really and there. So how do I, how do I really leverage the tool? It's like what they say in golf, let the, let the club do the work. Here we're letting the printer and and the engine do the work right uh, at the end of the day so all you're focused on are those high value you're spending the time and your quality operator time on the things that are the most valuable to you as a end customer and then you can have the regular production work run by kind of anybody that can run the printer exactly that's a, that's a great explanation especially in today's times right everybody needs to be able to say yes to anything and mm -hmm. you have that ability here whether it's 500 sheets of core plus that are just down and dirty get them out the door or super high end high margin high value applications um, you can do them back to back to back very very easily that versatility uh, is there one of uh, one of the things i missed when we talked about that two-sided print you said the zero point on one side and you can set the zero point on the second side it's probably similar processes to how you do it, but it allows you to have the zero point on either side of the printer. Is that? So it, it allows you a solid registration point. So you have one mm -hmm. true zero zero point, which is going to be on the back side on the left hand side of the printer. On mm -hmm. the right hand side, you have another series of corner blocks. So what that allows you to do is if your material is cut off skew, you're using the same two sides of material, regardless of how crooked they ah. are, you're using the same two sides of that material on the other yeah. side. Got it. So you it's not really a second set. It's just really ensuring you're using the same corner, just the other side of the, the, the in the, the set. So you, you got the registration from there. Yep. So that's it. That's okay. That's great. I learned something today. So. <laughs> Always happy to help. <laughs> yeah. Good. Other other questions? Is this helpful? Is this, uh, you know, I think let us know. Um, 
So the, can you, there's a, um, uh, somebody asked, can you expand on the 3M MCS Pro compatibility with a six, the 16H and how uh, UV LED works with vehicle wraps? Uh, Great question. Uh, um, yeah. So we have an ink set over here um, specifically designed for that. So um, we are co-branded with 3M. We are 3M MCS warranted. So if you are a 3M house and require that warranty, um, you know that uh, you have to be printing to the 3M ink with the 3M, uh, sorry, the 3M material with the 3M inks that are on the Pro 16H. And then you also need that 3M lamp. Um, and then your warranty is held with 3M. Um, mm -hmm. So to have a company like 3M, they're kind of a small company, maybe you've heard of them. Um, to have a company like 3M co-brand the inks and stand behind them um, for the amount of years that they do is, is a really great option. Um, and again, the fact that we, down to the pigments, grind, grind, our, own, um, grind our own pigments for the inks, um, you're getting a huge color gamut with the four color um, CMYK on board. So those graphics can be phenomenal and, and intricate and, and just wonderful. Perfect. Hey, we're right about at the hour. Um, so again, appreciate everybody's time that's been in. We did record this and we can make that available if one of your colleagues didn't make it in, in for some reason. Um, well, we do appreciate it. We will send out the presentation with the links uh, uh, to all those that, that did participate. Uh, take advantage of that fire access uh, certification. It's it's well worth it. Um, it you know um, is uh, um, is just a, is an offer, especially right now. Right, it's a, probably a good time to take some take some classes and get get uh, get uh, more um, educated about the, how how that how it works. That, Tiffany, that, Danny, thanks. That, um, just but, be uh, signing up. So that uh, certification has to be done by the end of May, and then no, you have the end of May. Uh, window to actually complete it. Okay. Well, and and everybody will get a link that participated to sign up. So take advantage of it. Don't wait till the end of May, because uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, that may come sooner. Since all the days are running together, you know, you may not know when the end of May is <laughs> for those of us working from home. Um, any any other parting uh, thoughts or comments or um, any other questions? Uh, did one more come in? Did one more came in? Uh, let me see. Uh, very helpful, I got. Um, good. Well, we we appreciate your guys' time, uh, everybody's time today. Thank thank you again for that. If there's other questions afterwards, uh, feel free to send them in to us. Uh, or if you're working with one of our partners, send them in to one of our partners to uh, to make sure we can get those answered as well. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thanks all.